science is beautiful. What's really exciting about science is it's frequently the most beautiful things that are the most correct things. It was seeing a picture the way I hadn't seen it before. It was this sort of God's eye view, if you will, of, of the terrain and saying, I have a new view of this. Now I can see things that nobody else can see. For the first time, we can actually see this information. It's like having the, the first telescope and being able to look out at the stars. This started when I got introduced to this guy, Danny Hillis. I was like, I don't want to meet a guy from Disney. And Danny didn't want to meet a doctor. And we got together, and what evolved from that was the ability to look with remarkable specificity and sensitivity of proteins in the body. And that's how new ideas come up. You juxtapose people who aren't normally together, present them with a little bit of facts, and they kind of ping pong back and forth for solutions about how to go get to that next answer in a way that wouldn't happen if you were just sitting with everybody that knew exactly what you do. Right now in medicine, people get expensive treatments because we don't have the diagnostics to know if it's right for them. So a lot of money is wasted. A lot of people go through treatments that aren't helpful to them. If you have a metric of how to follow a disease, you're going to be able to develop therapies for the disease. Without a metric, your only metric is basically survival. The moment something starts to change with the immune response, the proteins are what change first. From a drop of blood, I can know how you're doing that moment in time. I can know if you have a fever, if you have an infection. So it's giving us a picture not just of the disease, but of the whole state of the body. The idea of looking at proteins has been around for a long time. We haven't been able to do it very well. People had a lot of trouble getting consistent results. The off-the-shelf technology really wasn't optimized to do what we're doing now, which is look at the whole proteome. It was developed to look down deep and dirty at one protein at a time. What applied proteomics did was treat this like a semiconductor line. We engineered an automatic process so that every time we do it, we get exactly the same result with the same input. And that control allows us to collect data and think about data interactively, real time, dynamically. What we can do now that's different is we can look at hundreds of thousands of markers at once. It's incredible precision. Danny's proteomics can even tell the difference between what the weight of one neutron is in a specific protein and you need visualization to be able to tell people what the distinction is between that range of proteins. A lot of what applied proteomics is doing is solving that mathematical visualization problem of how do you see the pattern in those 100,000 numbers that tells you, should I give this person this drug or how much of it should I give to them? What is it about this data that looks to me like it's something I want to figure out? You know, these peaks look a little bit shifted or those ones look a little bit higher than those over there. These are all working in concert together. Once you figure out that pattern, you will be able to individualize medicine for every single person. Instead of categorizing cancers by body part and lumps like multiple sclerosis, lumps like Alzheimer's, we can start to understand subsets in the spectrum of many diseases. Proteins are going to be the key to understanding cancer ultimately, and I think to diagnosing it. Uh, probably earlier than any other way that we can think of. Proteomics offers the opportunity to really target some of the diseases that have been left behind. So if you put together a foundation that is targeting a disease, all of a sudden, you can start to get an understanding of the metrics of the disease, and hopefully get answers in months, not years. We need to start getting samples from healthy people, sick people, people who are being treated with different treatments. Once we identify the markers for disease, it'll go on a high throughput, low cost platform so it can be scaled to thousands overnight. It's actually going to be cost effective to reward people for making the diagnostics, because they're going to save you tens of thousands of dollars of people getting the wrong medicine. The future of discovery, the future of healthcare in the hospital, the future of healthcare in the doctor's office is gonna be, I'm getting lots of information, but I have the appropriate tools to see it, to filter it, to put it together, to get the better relationships out of it and make the better decision. To give to clinicians some view that they don't have otherwise of somebody's health. And they say, now I can measure something and now I know something that's going to make this person healthy. Proteomics is definitely the next frontier. We're just beginning to see the patterns and make sense of them and use them to guide treatment. The company was formed with the goal, really, of changing the world, which is the only reason we're here. We want to do things big, and we want to really make an important impact in how we care for patients.